Hey everyone, it's Catherine here with Ready Set ABA. I just wanted to jump on here and go over a concept I get asked a lot about, stimulus versus response generalization. So I'm gonna put up a whiteboard and we'll go over some concepts and some examples. So we have our terms on the board and I really want you to think about how to categorize the term stimulus and response. So when we hear the word stimulus or stimuli, we think about everything in the environment that we respond to. And this is, this is categorized sequentially as an antecedent. So I like to just go ahead and put the word antecedent over here so that we can categorize it in our head. So we have our antecedent box over here. And then in turn, for response generalization, this encompasses our responses, and this is part of the consequence. Because this is either going to be after or during the responses. So let's look at some examples here. For stimulus generalization, we have many different stimuli that we have learned how to respond to. So if we're given a variety of different things to interact with in our environment, we know how to respond. And they, they generally equal the same thing. So for example, if we're getting a package in the mail and we receive three different types of packages, these are different stimuli that we're receiving, but we know that they need to be opened. So we're presented with one of these three types of packages in the mail, and we know that regardless, we're going to open it. So all of these stimuli presented to us equal the same thing. So you have your one response as a result. So you can think of these scenarios too as any time you see multiple stimulus or many stimuli, this is going to be an indicator that it's referring to stimulus generalization. And this is a skill that we have to teach. So initially we don't necessarily know that all of these stimuli equal the same thing, but through discrimination training and through discrete trial training, we can make these connections and these categories and gen generalize the stimuli. Another example would be stop signs or red lights. We learn over time that stop lights can look differently. There could be a variety of different stop light shapes, whether it's horizontal or vertical, a stop sign, they all equal stopping. Next, when we're looking at response generalization, we want to think about a variety of different responses in a response class that we could behave, and this way we can know how to respond. So we have a variety of different ways to respond to one single stimuli, stimulus. So let's look at this example. If somebody says hello to you, there are a lot of different ways you can respond depending on your mood. You might wave, you might nod, say what's up if it's one of your friends. So there's a lot of different responses that you can engage in that still mean the same thing. So these responses are all a part of the same response class because they mean the same thing. Another example would be in an interverbal situation. If you ask somebody a question, what are some types of food? We've learned that there's a lot of different responses that we could say. So there's many different types of foods as part of a class. And we've understood all of these responses that would be an appropriate answer and a correct answer in this, given this stimulus. So I hope that this helps clarify the difference between stimulus and response generalization. Remember, if there are many stimuli, then it's going to be referring to generalizing a lot of different stimuli. And if there's many or multiple responses, then we know that this is going to be talking about response generalization and also depending on when it occurs. So if this is something that's happening before and there's a lot of different stimuli that we've learned to respond to, it's in the antecedent and that stimulus generalization versus if it's in the consequence piece or behavior piece after the stimulus has been presented, it's going to be in that consequence portion and it's response generalization. Hope this helps. Remember to subscribe and like our channel to get weekly updates for the videos that we post and also follow us on Instagram. Thanks everyone.